Hello everyone and welcome to my first real gaming video. Uh, today it's going to be a little bit different than how things normally will be, mainly because I'm playing a very, very old game. Uh, despite this game's age, it's near and dear to my heart because it's one of the first games I really got into, but more importantly, my late grandfather and I, who I was extremely close to, uh, we used to play it for hours and hours together. That game is Lords of the Realm 2. Uh, this version is a Steam version that somebody magically made run on modern operating systems. I picked it up a year or two ago for, I don't know, like five bucks. Um, and in honor of my grandfather, I've decided that I want to play through the campaign maybe once a year or once every other year, just as a way to remember him and remember the good times we had gaming together. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you can do custom games and whatnot in this, but I'm just going to do the original campaign. And I'm going to go by Delano because that was my grandfather's middle name and the name he always played the game under. Normally I'd go by like ROTP or Rise of the Phoenix, but since this is in honor of him, we're going to go ahead and go with that. Uh, hopefully the resolution on this will be all right because since it's such an old game it runs at I don't know like something even less than 800 by 600 like 640 by whatever um, I don't know the exact resolution it runs on but I just know it was certainly not made with the intent of running on modern monitors uh, there are a bunch of advanced options we could turn on. Uh, I'm just going to turn exploration on to make it more like a modern game where you have to actually go out and explore things to view them because if you have it off, you can just see everything. There's no fog of war. And that makes it even easier than it already is. Uh, game speed and scroll speed should be fine. Yeah, that's good. So to get started, we're gonna buy up some grain. 175 should do. I need to plant all these crops. So while I'm doing this, uh, the game is like a turn-based game, but there's also some RTS elements. Uh, it's kind of like the Total War games, where once you actually get into a fight, you go into a real-time mode and otherwise it's a turn-based game. So we have to distribute our peasants there. And I'll, I'll talk about the exact systems as we're going, but I just wanna go ahead and get these first few turns out of the way, since there's not much going on early game. Basically, there are three resources, wood, iron, and stone. Wood and iron are primarily used for creating your weapons whereas stone is for building castles. Uh, you have a number of different units that you can produce. Let's see if we can fix our rations here a little bit. We'll eat a bunch of cows for now. Not too many cows though. Uh, so yeah, basically you build up your province, you recruit your dudes, you go fight, try to take over the world, that sort of thing. So in these early turns, we're just kind of getting our province set up. Um, might buy a little bit more grain just so we can make it through the next year or so with plenty of food. Definitely don't want our people to starve. To build a weapon. Gotta mess with the rations again. We can probably go full grain at this point, but we shall see. So yeah, early game, just kind of getting things consolidated, getting happiness up to 100%. That way we grow quickly because people are going to want to move to our awesome county since everyone here is happy and joyous. Let's see, mercenaries, don't really want pikemen. So over time, mercenaries will come and visit your provinces. You can hire them for crowns. Early game, if you get like a nice mercenary army, you can play a lot faster. Uh, Moorish archers, yeah, we'll take those. Um, put those in the castle for now, that way we don't have to worry about, I mean, not that the computer really cheese us out because the computer kind of sucks, but it does give us some nice defense to start out with. So yeah, like I was saying, mercenaries will come by, otherwise you have to rely on 
the weapons that you make or buy, you can buy them from the merchant, raise an army, and the only goal for this first campaign is going to be to take out the Baron. So by the time we really get the ball rolling, he'll probably have a province or two, we'll probably have a province or two. Should be a pretty quick video. Um, the early campaigns are particularly easy. Um, some of the later missions can be kind of tricky, but overall, uh, since it's such an old game, the AI is not particularly advanced or excellent, but still a pretty fun little game, and like I said before, it has a lot of good childhood memories for me. So, uh, one, one thing I used to do a lot is run no cows, because if you see here, we're using 421 population on 75 animals, whereas we're using 780 farmers, so less than double, and we're getting a huge amount of grain. I mean, we're only eating 185 grain per turn, and we're netting 1375 per year, so that's like, what, like eight or nine turns, so it's like two years of grain that we're gaining per year, something like that. So basically, grain's a lot more population efficient, but it is a choice I've made, again, to make things a little bit harder, and I think it's supposed to make it so that you don't get the Black Plague as often. Uh, it's something that's gonna happen to us at some point here. Um, we'll start making some pikemen. Pikes and archers are both units that I'm fond of. Archers are seem to be extremely ridiculous in this game. Buy these goods, my lord. We can buy 1,400 stone. How much do we need to build a castle? 1,960. And we'll probably just go with a Norman keep and call it a day. So buy what, like a thousand stone? Buy these goods, my lord. Uh, the joys of old interfaces is we can't just type in how much stone that we would like, but it's all good, we'll, we'll manage either way. So I think I heard the Baron's army marching around, even with the fog of war off, yeah there he is, uh, even with the fog of war off, you can still hear armies, so he'll probably try to attack this, I don't know if his army will be strong enough does not have the split this to army. take it since he already took one county, but we'll see. So we'll go ahead and get 200 archers in the castle. We get 50 extra quote-unquote free archers um, because when you build a castle you automatically get a certain amount of troops like quote-unquote for free. Um, so that'll help get our army up and running once we get some pikes going. We want to recruit pretty soon uh, since you don't really get like population in this game is kind of like it's soft capped I guess you would say but it's more of like a really hard soft cap uh, it's very rare to have it over 2,000 even hitting 2,000 is pretty tough Your people are in good health, my lord. I mean our births and deaths are almost equaling out you know, though we still do have some immigrants coming in which is nice the long spell of uh, another drought. These poor cows. First a flood, now a drought. These poor cows have not had a good time at all. Uh, one question I always used to wonder is whether or not there was any statistical difference between mercenaries and normal troops. You would kind of think that mercenaries would be better because they're like professional fighters. Yeah, 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 Baron, go away. But I'm pretty sure there's actually no statistical difference. Let's see, we got 200 pikes. Let's get some swordsmen in there. So we're gonna have to switch over to, you know, 280, how much do I have stockpiled a lot? So, you know, we can afford to eat through our stockpiles a bit. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, you'd think mercenaries would be better because they're like professional lifelong soldiers, but I'm pretty sure it's, there's no difference. It's just a matter of you easily being able to pick up some military. So he has a tiny army coming to attack us. No big deal. 
54 turns. That must be like five guys or something. So basically the way it works is when you siege a castle, you can opt to build various siege weaponry. Probably do one more turn of swords and then get to some bows. And the more siege weaponry you build, combined with how many troops you have that are available to actually build it, determines how long it takes until the siege commences. Um, big armies can build stuff in like two turns, no problem. Since his army is extraordinarily tiny, it's going to take him forever. So losing a little bit of wood per turn, not a big deal. I'm hoping we pick up some mercenaries so we can just go ahead and recruit kind of like a GG army. Can move these guys back over here now since they're going to be safe since he's sieging us 15,000 crowns all right well let's go to the shop maybe pick up a hundred more bows be a 600 man army maybe some knights too buy these goods my let's see how much the hundred bows cost that's too many all right we're just gonna click it because Reason goes, my lord. Sure. Spent all of our money. We have a good number of weapons. 735. Can we get away with raising an army? 44 happiness? Hmm. Eh. We should be able to win off the back of this army, so we'll just go for it. So, all the knights, all the archers, all the pikes, and some swordsmen. I'm gonna put this down a little bit. Probably go ahead and triple our rations to see if we can get some happiness back because higher rations are gonna give us more happiness. Uh, we need to not, we need to not not pay our army. That is bad. Soldiers like getting paid. Yeah, 15 dudes. We'll auto calc it. No point in actually doing that fight. I will step up here and let him attack us. So we'll have our first actual battle with his terrible army. So these are all the different unit types. Peasants suck. Crossbowmen are kind of good. Um, they're super good at killing armored units like knights, pikes, and swordsmen, but they fire really slow and they have low range. Macemen are like unmounted knights that have a lot less defense. I guess I can explain things while we go ahead and do the battle. Um, basically, macemen are like the glass cannons of this game. So they do a ton of damage, but they also die extremely quickly. And despite this game being very old, I think that it uses control groups, yeah. So, one bad thing about the game is the AI, in terms of combat, is like very exploitable. So if you just have your archers like get in range and start shooting at them, they're going to freak out for a second and be like, holy crap, we're getting shot at. And then they're going to end up just running into your men, which is kind of exactly what you want them to do. But it's just one of those things that makes the game easier than it necessarily has to be. So we're going to set up the knights to try to get a flank on his archers. Let these peasants just get completely mowed down. Make sure we get these guys in there. We don't need people standing around doing nothing while their homies are dying. And they, the unit AI is also particularly dumb, as you just saw there where the knights were getting shot at, but they just decide to sit there and take it. So not exactly the smartest. But, Pretty easy battle. We had a much larger and much more powerful army in terms of units, seeing as how the majority of our army wasn't peasants. So I'll just let things get mopped up, start conquering his counties. 
and be on the way to finishing the first you game. Are becoming... So we'll just go around the clock. Uh, he already has a castle there. Not a particularly difficult castle to take, thankfully. Let's get back down to normal rations. And we'll start making bows some more because archers are good. So for a Mott and Bailey, you pretty much just need two battering rams. You could get away with one, but if the AI decides to be not super dumb, then they could potentially kill. I don't even know if this has a full garrison or not, but they could potentially kill your one battering ram and then you have to hack down the gate with your dudes, which is not where you want to be. So we'll have that start breaking down the gate, organize our dudes, get the archers over there. Knights might go on a super fancy ninja mission here in a second. And you guys can go back over there. So it should take like six hits maybe to break down the gate. I don't remember exactly. But see, so he's not even like pouring oil or anything on the gate. So and then as soon as the wall is broken down, they get scared. Decide, hey, we should go back to the back of the castle. And defend there. So we're gonna do a little trick that I've discovered over the years. I don't know if I discovered it or who discovered it. Where you can actually like pour out the oil, so to speak, if you have one of your dudes next to it. You can also burn these houses, which actually, if you're not careful, can kill like a bunch of your guys. Should have poured out that oil actually before I broke down the second part of the gate there, but it doesn't really matter. So go ahead and get our army in. We can watch the old school pathfinding algorithm. See these knights. Oh wow, those guys were smart. I actually ran around the fire. Thank you guys. Yeah, we can watch the old school pathfinding algorithm be hilarious. Probably the hardest part about playing this game is actually just managing the stupidity of your units most of the time. So, basically, what we want to do they have archers, archers suck at melee combat, because that makes sense. They have bows. So we'll see if we can get our dudes in there. Hopefully the knights can sneak around and capture the flag, because the two ways of winning a siege are either A, kill all the defenders, or B, capture the flag, which knights and macemen are particularly good at. This is why you don't want your dudes like, this is why you want to pour out the oil. Just look at this casualties. We just lost like 200 dudes just running through the oil there. So we may end up having to raise another army in order to win. But we'll see. Lost more men than I would have liked, but not a huge deal. So let's lower the tax a bit here so that we can get our happiness up. Thankfully, we're in perfect health, which helps a bunch. And we have access to stone now, which means if we need to, we could build some better castles, but not particularly counting on needing better castles. I would like to get some people, some garrison in here though, just so he can't like back cap it. So we'll send some grain to this county, get them kicking off. <clears throat> Probably uh, sell the cows there once the grain arrives, as long as he doesn't kill the grain. 
Because you can actually intercept aid shipments in this game. That's one of the things that you can be pesky to people about. Uh, the AI doesn't really seem to send many aid shipments, though. So what if we get rid of 2,000 crowns? How much grain is that? 500 grain? I don't think that's enough for 1,200 people. Yeah, I don't think they'd make it another four turns. Well, they're about to get this grain, though. Hmm. But then we're only going to be able to plant... You can only plant eight fields. I think it's 10, 10 grain per full field. Uh, there's like quarter field, half field, three quarters, and full field. Um, if you plant full fields, then whenever you harvest it, harvest the grain, you get a lot more out of it. Yeah, we can manage with having to run off of a bunch of cows for a while. Oh, is he gonna come burn my fields? <sighs> How bad manner of him. So we're gonna have to try to get some sort of army to stop that. 1800 crowns. We don't have a merchant in either of our provinces. Mm. Much better army from him this time around be more of a pain but we still have a huge advantage so we should win so especially since we can cheese so i like to start each fight by getting all of my units together in the groups that i want them to be actually i'm gonna send the knights up here real quick might need to babysit them to come around the water. Oh, they're not going to make it, are they? I was going to try to intercept his archers. Alright, we'll just have to chill up here. Uh, where do we want to fight? I think we just want to come across the bridge. Yeah, come across the bridge shoot at him from this direction try to lock him up in the rocks or whatever these little things are supposed to be and we'll have our knights come in on his archers and his knights this is why archers are insane in this game the range like crosswomen could probably shoot from like here to there maybe maybe like yeah, probably about that range, whereas archers shoot like two screens, it seems like. There is like a weird pseudo glitch you can use where like you could have a guy running back and forth and then the arrows don't actually hit them. Alright, let's just get up in there, boys. You can like dodge the arrows because of the travel time, which is a weird, I don't want to call it a glitch. Maybe it's more of a clever use of game mechanics. Kind of makes crossbows a little bit better in some ways because the crossbow bolts travel very quickly. I want to try to get these archers engaged. Because once they're in melee combat, they cannot shoot arrows. And they suck pretty bad at melee combat. Archers do. Which, thankfully, they have some weakness with how dominant they are otherwise. So we'll just give the mop up command. Which units will just go and engage whatever they can. And lost, well, like a hundred dudes, so not too bad given that that army of his was pretty decent, all things considered. Uh, yeah, still no... No merchant. So maybe this army comes back? I kind of don't want this army to come back, though. I want it to come down here and take his main province. 
because he probably still just has the Mott and Bailey there. So this slider is really handy. It automatically will move your population around and keep things relatively set how you had them. Another two-man army. So basically there's three army sizes, one man, two man, three man. I forget the exact numerical cool. breakdown of when they gain that extra dude, but uh, two men means he probably has about this many troops and getting a little bit worried because our melee line is starting to look pretty thin, all things considered. Uh, we only have... 35 swordsmen and 88 pikes left. Uh, don't want to start wasting the archers, so I'll probably will just go garrison this. Garrison this castle, make him siege us, and recruit another army. Playing a bit overly safe, but should be fine. So let's put. 100 and like 75 archers and then 25 swordsmen in normally against the ai you can get away with just running only archers in your castles but i like to put some swordsmen in there in case worst comes to worst Alright, so we're going to have to deal with this super annoying army that's just pillaging our field. So, I don't really remember the AI doing that too much back when I used to play, but maybe they did. Uh, we're going to lose a lot of cows, but we need to get our wheat going. Yeah, full wheat rations. That would be nice to be able to hire... 200 pikemen will last a long time. 7% uh, tax because that's minus 2 happiness and we're getting plus 1 from ration being normal, plus 1 from health being good. So we don't lose any happiness here. We're still trying to get our happiness built back up. So, you know, I should have just taken this army out of the castle and had it engage this. This is probably like is one man or like 50 men or something. Which that's one way the AI is able to cheat. Is I've seen them make like one man armies before somehow or another. Whereas normally 50 men is the lowest that you can go to make an army out of nowhere. So thankfully this army is mostly peasants. So what does he have actually? Battering Ram and Siege Towers. So we'll probably have to fight in here. So let's go ahead and pull everybody back. Maybe he'll be dumb and try and dig the moat. I've seen the AI try to dig this moat before. Which is crazy because it's like the biggest moat in the game. It's like even wider than the best castle in the game's moat. So, not to mention, like, you just have a gate that you can break down without having to dig any moat or anything like that. So this is why I like to have a couple swordsmen. Um, another little thing in this game is... So, each dude is actually representative of a certain number of guys so like this is 16 swordsmen nine swordsmen and somehow or another it decides to break up the total number of units you have into like smaller numbers of individual units that represent you know 16 units or whatever um sometimes it will just be four men in like each little squad or each little unit whatever you want to call it and the siege engines, for whatever reason, inherit the unit size that all the other units get. So like every unit on this fight will be a max of 16 men. And 
it's kind of cheesy because I could pour oil on a four man size battering ram and it's just gonna like straight out kill it. Uh, in which case I would have moved the oil up here and burnt his battering rams and then would have been no problem. I'm not gonna waste the oil on the peasants, I don't think. Uh, these archers, their shots are getting blocked by the wall. These ones might be hitting me? Yeah, they must be because I'm losing some dudes. Uh, I can actually send my guys out of the gate to fight without him being able to come through, which is kind of goofy. Although he got the gate down, so that could be a problem potentially. I think we'll still be okay. Let's see, he's losing guys. I'm not, because he can't shoot over. This is supposed to be like a tower, I guess. Need to make sure these dudes stay on the flag because I don't want him capturing the flag. Please pour the oil. There's another kind of weird bug where like once the gate's down, the second gate's down, you can't pour the oil yourself, which is awkward to say the least. Might turn up the game speed after this fight. It's going a bit slow. These fights could be a lot quicker, actually. Hopefully we win? Let's see if I can move this guy back at all. To get him actually shooting again. So I want as many archers as possible shooting versus being stuck in melee combat. Because as I've said before, they are just atrocious at melee combat. These swordsmen are probably not going to live for very long. See, he's only one dude left. He takes like three arrow hits or something before he dies. Yeah, rip. Rest in peace, my dude. Thank you for your valiant sacrifice. Okay, doesn't have any army left. So that was actually a much closer battle than I think it had to be. I really would like to get this castle upgraded. Buy these goods, my lord. Thousand stone. A stone I need 1920. So we need 300 more. What if we sell almost all these cows? <sighs> if we sell all but one cow, 2,700. Be almost 900 stone. We only need 300 stone. Buy these goods, my lord. Save some crowns. I think we had enough, Black. yeah. Black. So let's get this built. I think two seasons is the fastest it can be built. All right, and once that's done, we'll get another little boost, I believe. A band of Irish mercenaries is available. Another little troop boost in there. And... Oh, we have 130 bows ready to go, so that will be fine. Yeah, 50 extra. Let's so have 157 troops. Go ahead and try to put 155-ish archers in there. Get a couple more sword homies. So 314, that's not what I meant to click, this is one of your 211, alright, lower the tax a bit, now it's pretty much to the point where we can't lose, need 2000 more stone for that. 
So I'm just going to try to get another nice, decent army built up. And end things. He has another army, another crappy army marching in. A band of Irish, mercenaries is available Irish, 200 Irish pikes. No mercenaries in this army, so yes. Uh, one little quirk of the game is that you can only have one mercenary army with or like as part of each of your actual armies this is one of your so now we really have almost 300 pikes so I'm gonna try to crank out a bunch of bows and then go win for the GG all right, well, I'm going to kill this little pesky guy before he starts killing my fields. See, how does he get a 39-man army? I don't, I don't get that. Some nice computer hacks he's got there. So we're making a good number of bows per turn. Woo! I thought he was going to be able to get that. I don't really want to fight there. So 200, we can make another 400 dudes. Maybe I should have fought that. I guess I could recruit here, merge with that, and then fight him. Another drawback of the engine is you can't actually pick, like I would like to make 478 guys, but can't. I don't really want to have uh, any army space wasted on peasants. Meant to actually merge those guys, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, plenty of money. This is about to get plus two. So. One of you can make swords. That's a lot of swords. I'm gonna go through the iron very quickly. One of you can make bows. Shouldn't matter too much, all things considered. Combine these armies. All right. Don't particularly feel like fighting this. I would have lost less guys if I had fought it, but. I don't know, I just feel like ending the game rather than micromanaging easy battles. So one min-maxing thing, last turn I could have put this on 8% tax because perfect health is like plus 2 or maybe plus 3. Something along those lines. Yeah, see I'm out of iron already from that. Uh, let's just have everyone make stone and we'll... Try to get a royal castle here. 300 tons needed. Yeah, we'll have enough next turn. Could buy it now, but don't particularly need it. And as far as I can remember, I've never lost a royal castle to the AI. Because you can cheese the royal castle pretty hard. Hopefully this is going to have enough grain in the long run. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, I guess we could keep getting stone to upgrade this castle. But yeah, that one started construction. Okay, good. 200, yeah, so one turn of wood, a couple turns of stone. So like as soon as you start construction on the castle, then... Uh, I don't feel like microing that. Uh, well, actually, it, it eats the resources until you start the construction, is what I meant to say. He has yet another army coming. What are these? Irish pikemen? Sure. We'll just keep them chilling in case we need another army at some point. One another thing that makes this game easy, has so many peasants, is the AI never, well, 
two of the AI, there's like four different AI characters, the Baron, the Knight, the Countess, and the Bishop. Two of the characters, the Baron and the Knight, never build any good castles. Yeah, 40, 40 dudes, all right. You got it, buddy. So crank that up. Don't particularly need the money, but that's whatever. This is pretty much on just like this castle. Easy GG at this point. Uh, so I'll just end the turns relatively quickly. We're not gonna need any more stone. So we're just gonna make bows since we have these 200 pikemen sitting Quarry. there. Quarry. Oh, we don't have any wood stockpile, do we? Yeah. So as far as blacksmithing goes, you have to actually have the resource stockpiled. So it won't it won't be able to use this wood until it goes to the stockpile or whatever you want to call that. So should be able to auto calc this. Um, if I won't lose too many guys, that's way more than I would have lost had we micro the fight ourselves but shouldn't really matter how many of our pikes are left let's see 94 and this is 200 so we can switch them out and siege the last province and win Man, tons of pikemen up in here. It's really nice when you can get like 200 macemen as your first mercenary army because if you get that in the first few turns of the game, the neutral towns aren't built up, like they don't have good population, which means they can't really defend themselves. So you can sometimes just take like two provinces right at the beginning of the game. The castle has been yeah. Siege. This uh, castle yes. Two battering rams. I'll have to wait till next turn to split, okay. 76 seasons. Don't want that. Not that it will matter. Combine these armies. And get those pikes in there. Make sure each province is running somewhat optimally because reasons. I don't know. It's not gonna matter after this turn as long as we win the fight, which he has a really poor garrison. Oh, I meant to turn up the speed. I'll do the fight just because... Uh, where are my other knights? Is that all my knights? Hopefully not. Yeah, apparently it is. Alright, knights, you can be group one. You guys need to stop shooting over the wall because there's a huge penalty to arch your accuracy if you're shooting up a wall, so to speak. You will take way more casualties than they do. Alright, so this time we should actually go spill the oil before we batter down the second gate. Because as long as the second gate is still standing, the AI, at least it didn't used to, pull the oil all the way back. I think it's going to move it like here and here. No, oh, maybe not. Hmm. I really don't remember it doing that, but... Oh well. Not going to matter in this fight because... Should still win. Oh no, don't run in the fire, you moron. It's weird, I don't really understand how the burning of these houses works. I just know you have to kind of walk next to it slash past it. And it sets them on fire and generally I like doing it with one guy. That way 
my army doesn't decide that they all want to just go suicide and fire and be dumb. So, we'll go ahead and batter that down. It actually might die to the archers. It's somewhat possible that that battering ram will actually die. If you put the oil on it, it would definitely die, but I think it'll be okay, yeah. The second gate's a lot easier, actually, to tear down than the first gate. Alright, geniuses. Let's give you a little bit of help. Finding your way around the wall. Alright, dudes. I know you're, like, probably recruited medieval peasants that aren't particularly educated, but it's not like walking around a wall. It's exactly rocket science or whatever you want to call it. Not to mention, like, these people I'm sure all know how to farm and do a lot of things that people these days don't know how to do, so it's not like they were dummies. This guy just doesn't want to go to war. He's just AWOL. Should send him in first. Alright. Hopefully the pikemen can get it done. They don't do... Pikes don't do a lot of damage. They just have a ton of armor. So they're very, very sturdy units. Oh, thank goodness that oil went that way. So one little trick, if you put your archers up on this wall, they can shoot into here a lot more effectively than if they're trying to shoot up it. I mean, not that they're particularly effective shooting over the wall to the other wall, but if they're standing like Actually, this might not even be hitting now that he's down that ramp. Let's see if we can just kill the peasants and get the flag. Rather than trying to hack through all of the dudes. That's what I mean by pikes. Like, if these were macemen, these peasants right here would just be getting completely slaughtered. Oh, he's burning his own peasants. Nice. Thanks, bro. Uh, of course, the knight goes to defend the flag instantly. Well, apparently we're hacking through everybody. A fitting end, I guess. And this will be the last battle as long as he doesn't have an army anywhere. Because the victory requirements are that none of your enemies have any provinces and none of your enemies have any armies. Because in theory, if they had an army, they could go win a siege somewhere. Alright, well, the Baron has lost, which means we have won the very first mission. Uh, the other missions tend to get longer, so if... I do videos of them. They might be broken up into two or three parts. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this was a little bit different of a video because of the old game, the low resolution. And because of all those complications, I didn't include a camera on myself, whereas normally I would. Um, my next video will probably be either Europa Universalis 4 or Darkest Dungeon. Uh, basically, the way the campaign works is you play one mission, then go to another, then go to another. So I'm just going to save it here. Uh, no. So, if you guys are interested in watching me play through the rest of the game, definitely let me know. I'm going to do it either way in honor of my grandfather on my own time. Um, but I'm happy to upload the episodes to YouTube if people want to watch it. Otherwise, I hope to see you guys in my next video uh, once I decide what that is. And have a great day and take care.